Hi, welcome to McClutchy Maths. I'm Natalie McClutchy and today we're going to be talking about weighted graphs. This is our next video in the series on networks and matrices for Year 12 General Maths. I'm assuming you've watched my videos on Eulerian and Hamiltonian graphs. These were the two previous videos. Let's get started with today's work. So weighting. Values can be attached to different edges of a graph. So I've got a graph shown on the right. We can attach different values to those edges. So notice here I've put in some numbers. Those numbers could mean a variety of things. It could be the time taken to travel between two points on an edge. So for example, if I looked at point A and point B, 11 could mean 11 minutes to travel from A to B. It could also be a physical distance like 11 kilometers or even a cost to complete a process if this particular network represented a process that was completed. So it might take me, cost me $11 to complete the part of the steps of A and B to B. Ideally, if I'm wanting to travel through a network, I want to minimise the amount of time it takes to get through the network or how much it costs me or the actual distance I have to travel. So the idea of travelling through the network is we want to make sure that the pathway that we choose has the lowest cost, time or distance. So in my first worked example, I've got a fairly complex looking network over here on the right. I want to get from point A, which is one side of the network, all the way over to point D, and I need to use every vertex. So an example in real life I could think of with this might be if I was delivering parcels for Australia Post. I would want to make sure I visited every home, but I would want to take the route that was the shortest number of kilometres so that I'm not using as much fuel on my motorbike. Okay, so step one is I need to work out what kind of path I'm being asked to follow. So in this case, it's going to be Hamiltonian because I'm visiting every vertex. So it's, uh, that means I could um, don't need to travel on every edge. I just need to visit every vertex. And I'm looking at two different endpoints. So it's not just Hamiltonian, it's semi-Hamiltonian. Okay, so knowing that helps me understand the kind of rules I'm going to follow. Step two is I'm going to look at using trial and error again. I'm sure some of you are sick of using trial and error by now, but I need to find all the different pathways I could follow that's going to follow that rule. Now, there could be more than one way to get through a network, and we're wanting to find that shortest distance. So I need to find every way through the network first and then identify which one's the shortest. So firstly, I could go from A to B. Now, when you're working out through trial and error, what I would do is look at point B and it's like a decision point. So I'm going to start my next cycle when I try this again, going from A to B again, I'm going to choose the different pathway. In the first instance, I'm going to choose point G. So next time I'm going to choose point C. And then I'm going to go to E. Notice point G was a decision point as well. I could have gone to H instead. And now I'm going to point F and point H and point D, oh, so, oh, point C, and now point D. And now I've written my pathway here on my um, on left-hand side in my working space. Now, if you've got different colored erasable pens or different colored highlighters, this could be a good strategy to make sure that you're um, choosing a different path next time, but it's also good writing it down so that you can rub out what you've done and have another go and make sure you've traveled a different way. So notice last time I talked about when I got to point B, I had to make a decision. Do I go to G or do I go to C? Well, in my next choice, I'm going to go to C. So I'm thinking about the first decision I made. The next decision I make, I'm going to go to H, and now I have to backtrack through the network to G to make sure I don't leave that one behind. And then I'm going to choose E, F, and D. So that's my second pathway that I've found through the network. Now, I've covered A to B and all the choices coming out of B. This time, I'm going to go a different way in my network. I'm going to go to point E as my first pathway. And then I've got a choice at E. Do I go to G or do I go to F? Well, this time I'm going to choose G, then B, then C, H, F, D. So you can see that when you get to these decision, these fork ways, that you need to remember that in your mind to make sure you choose the other way. It's a bit like a choose your adventure novel, really. Okay, so the next time I'm going to choose G, um, to go to F. Last time I chose G, this time I'm going a different way. I'm going to go back to G, up to B, out to C, down to H, and across to D. You might think I'm surely running out of different choices at this point, but there is actually one more way through this network. A, E, F, H, G, B, C, D. And now I've exhausted all of the possibilities, so it's always a good idea to check were there any other ways. 
Now I'm going to work out the distance of each of these routes. Okay, so I'm going to uh, basically set up a little table here and I'm going to add up all of the different weightings and distances for each of the pathways. So this is where it's a good idea to have your little pen and trace back over it again so that you don't miss any numbers. And remember that each part of the network is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stages to get through all of the different vertices. So you're going to basically make sure that all of your sums have seven numbers in them. So I'm going to put all of the sums down there. I've worked out that that first route that I chose was 20 kilometers. And now if I do that and repeat that for all of the different other routes that I found, I'll find that the choice I need to make is the one with the shortest route. And that was this pathway, the third one that I found. So it's this is why it's a good idea to work out all the pathways because the first one is not always the shortest one that you'll find. And then my very last step is I need to write a statement because just finding it and scribbling some working down on the paper and tracing and retracing over the network is not really the working your teacher wants to see. They want to see that you've chosen a path. So you're going to write a statement. The shortest path was A, E, G, B, C, H, F, D. What a mouthful. Well, that's all we have time for with weighted graphs. It's your turn now to go and practice. Hope you've got those erasable hands, hand, pens handy. Have a lovely day.